You are getting 100% Jody on women taking the lead. Did you know that your body responds to your frame of mind? When I work out, if I start thinking about the things that are stressing me out, or if my mind starts floating towards negative thoughts, I immediately have a harder time catching my breath and my muscles start to cramp up. It's amazing biofeedback and it's fascinating. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentakingthelead.com to join the community and get the resources to support you on your leadership journey. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me. This is the month-end episode. That means an update on goals. (laughs) This month, I'm going to review my goals from the perspective of being versus doing. Many of us believe that if we're not getting the results we are looking for, it means we have to work harder. Although there are some cases where this might be true, I believe, especially in this community of go-getting women, more often than not, it means we have to shift who we are being as we are taking action towards our goals. It's more than just working smarter, not harder, but that can be a part of it too. It's about the attitude you bring, your self-awareness and your presence as you do what needs to be done or hold your hats. It's who you are being as you step back and allow others to take action on your behalf. I'll go through each of my goals and explain it more as I talk about the progress or lack of progress I've made in the past month. May was a busy month with the Accomplished Intensive wrapping up the first week, the main women's conference happening the second week, a slew of corporate training in the third week, and all the meetings that could not happen in the second and third weeks landing in the fourth week of May. (laughs) Even with all the craziness, I feel I've I've made some progress, and it definitely has helped to keep my goals top of mind, even as I'm working on other things. So the first goal I'll talk about is building more strength and endurance. And the original goal for strength and endurance was to do 300 Spartan regulation burpees in good form in one session by June 30th, but I completed that in February. My burpee goal is now at 1,000 burpees, um, and I want to complete that at an event I'm going to be doing in October. Separately, I have a goal to do an unassisted pull-up before the end of the year. I have not done a great job of incorporating the pull-ups into my workout, so I'm adding a task to my calendar each day to prompt me to do at least a few assisted pull-ups with the band every day. As of the day I'm recording this episode, I have completed doing 600 Spartan regulation burpees, that's um, burpees where you go chest to the ground on the push-up, in good form in one workout session. Doing so many burpees in one workout each week has been a little hard on my body. I recently remembered that when I was training for the marathon, the program I used had the long run scheduled every other week, and on the weeks in between, the distance would be half what the previous long run was. So for instance, if my long run of 14 miles happened today, next week I would run seven, the week after I would run 16, and the week after that it would be eight miles. After I remembered that, I decided this is how I'm going to do my burpee workouts. Rather than add 25 burpees to my workout session each week, I'll add 50 burpees every other week and half the burpees on the weeks in between. This will give my body more time to recover after pushing my wall. So I did 600 burpees in one session two weeks ago. Uh, Last week, I did 300 burpees, and this week, I'll be doing 650. This is an example of working smarter. The added benefit of doing these halved workouts on the weeks in between is I can compare my current time with my original time. So for instance, when I did 300 burpees in February, it took me 56 minutes and 36 seconds to complete. Last week, it took me 52 minutes and 22 seconds to complete, shaving 4 minutes and 14 seconds off of my time. That felt good to see and showed the progress I've made with my fitness. Another thing that has made a difference in my workouts is my mentality. Who I be during my workouts is a mentality of this is happening and I'm lucky I have the ability to do this many burpees. 
This impacts my presence, creating one of calm confidence as I'm doing the burpees. And full transparency, this is not the presence I wake up with the morning I'm doing this big workout. I'm usually feeling a little anxious about what I'm going to be putting myself through. But if you've ever trained for an endurance event, you know how critical it is to have a positive frame of mind. Did you know that your body responds to your frame of mind? When I work out, if I start thinking about the things that are stressing me out, or if my mind starts floating towards negative thoughts, I immediately have a harder time catching my breath and my muscles start to cramp up. It's amazing biofeedback and it's fascinating. So as I'm preparing to do my workout, I shift my attitude and I get it done without any mental suffering. Attitude and presence impacts your ability to take action towards your goals. So keep that in mind. The next goal is to do a Women Taking the Lead branded full day event in the summer or fall. So this is happening in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I will be collaborating with Emily LaRue, the Spartan Women Global Leader of Spartan Races Incorporated, to do a Burpees for Boobs event in the Portland, Maine area. I'm going to coordinate the event here in Maine, but the intention is to have these events happening globally in October. Now that the work for the Maine Women's Conference and the corporate workshops has slowed a bit, I'm shifting my focus to this event. I'm currently in the process of scheduling a call with Emily LaRue to begin coordinating this event. I've also aligned with Marie Sola of Daughters of Change to make this event happen, and we are both excited. Marie says she's never done a burpee in her life, but she's looking forward to learning, and I hope she's still in after she's done a few burpees. (laughs) I'll admit, in the time that I've had to put this goal on the back burner, I've had random defeating thoughts like, can I really make this happen? And what if it completely flops? I've come to realize I need to take the same attitude I've taken on for my burpee workouts. This is happening, and I'm lucky I have the ability and the network to make this happen. And that feels better. The next goal is to increase profitability in my business. So the specific goal is to have a net income, earnings minus expenses, of $80,000 minimum this year. April's profit and loss report showed a net profit of $2,730.41, slightly lower than March's profit and still far off from the average $6,700 a month required to see a net profit of $80,000. In June, I'll be participating in two strategy sessions with my mastermind group to take a look at this goal and what it's going to take to achieve it. I realize I still have stories around selling and conveying value. One of my struggles is my ideal client is a busy, overworked woman. It is not uncommon for someone to reach out to me to explore coaching. They want to work with me, but then all the things I can help them with come up and cause them to put coaching on the back burner. And it's tragic when I hear back from some of these women a little further down the road and nothing has changed or more gut wrenching, things have gotten worse. There are definitely some actions I can take to tweak my packages, my offerings, and my website, but I know the big piece of this is going to be shifting who I am being when I'm chatting with a potential client. I know there are instances when I'm so conscious of not coming off as salesy or pushy that I undermine my own calm and confidence. I know when my coaching process is the solution to someone's biggest problems, and I have to be very clear about that and also clear about the cost of putting off the solution. It's a dance, but I know that by shifting who I'm being in these conversations, I can do it gracefully and be a support to the women whom I most love to help. Then another goal I had is outsourcing, and this is contingent upon the profitability goal. This goal is to outsource social media content creation and the email inbox management. I'm going to hold space for this goal. I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself because I know without a doubt, once my profitability goal gains some traction, this is a done deal. Who I am being in regard to outsourcing is this is happening. Oh, yes, it is. (laughs) Then lastly, uh, I have another goal to be in a committed monogamous relationship with a man. 
I'm still doing the do. Most traction is happening on the dating app. No surprise there. I'm making connections and planning dates. I've also got a couple of friends who know someone they want to fix me up with, and I have granted my permission for them to coordinate introductions. You have to be careful with this because sometimes who your friends see you with is not the person you see yourself with. I guess this could go either way, but in the past, it has not worked out for me. I've been on some odd blind dates in the past, and I am typically not a fan of blind dates. However, given the conversations I've had with my friends, I felt comfortable giving the go-ahead. With this goal, um, I'm staying in the arena, as Brene Brown has described it, and seeing it through even though it's difficult for me. I had an experience this past month that played into all my old stories about men, that they are not straightforward, they don't tell the whole truth, and the truth they leave out is the truth that would have been really important for you to know. This one shook me to my core, um, partially because I was worn out from a couple other things that were pulling at my energy, and partially because this man was a person I thought would be completely honest with me. I I never had any reason to doubt him. So for about a week um, after it all came to light, up was down and down was up, and I questioned how much I could trust my own judgment in people because I had complete faith in this person to be a friend and to be completely honest with me. I've mostly made peace with it and energetically forgave, but talking about it even vaguely with you is causing some emotion to come up again. Historically, this is when I would check out and decide finding a partner was not important to me and not worth the negative impact it was having on my energy and mindset, which would have a ripple effect on my career, my business, and my overall wellness. So I'm in the arena. I've been knocked around a bit, but I'm still in the game and I am proud of myself for that. So who I'm calling myself forth to be is soft, open, loving, calm, confident, and playful. It is a practice, but it is worth it. One thing that's helped me with my stress level, my self-awareness, my attitude, and my presence is the work I've done with the energy leadership assessment. And this is a vital tool I use for myself and in my business to get to the heart of what keeps me from naturally expressing who I am. And who I naturally am is calm, confident, powerful, playful, and loving. And the energy leadership assessment is at the heart of the work I do with my clients. And it's the reason they start having crazy aha moments moments right away and can see impactful progress within weeks or even days of beginning to work together. If you've been spinning your wheels and working harder and harder to make progress towards your goals, I'm going to suggest that it's not what you're doing or not doing that's holding you back. It's who you're being and you are not being your best self. So if you're interested in finding out more, you can go to womentakingthelead.com forward slash coaching. There you can also purchase the assessment for yourself, which will give you the information you need to achieve your biggest goals with a lot more ease. So again, you can find out more at womentakingthelead.com forward slash coaching. As always, I hope this was of value to you and here's to your success. Thank you all for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. And to strengthen you on your own leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson, so here goes. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining me, and here's to your success.